Hey everyone, this is Brainwaves and in this video I'm gonna show you how to make dark trippy dubstep. Besides this being a video of my sound design, I also want to make it like a how-to layer video. So I'm gonna be, you know, just showing every layer and how that kind of affects the final sound. And uh, this whole project file is now available on my Patreon. So if you want to get that, go ahead and check the link in the description. This is what we're working with today. So the first layer is just my sub bass. Um, this is a rack that I always use that I created. It has a ton of things mapped in here and, uh, and some snapshots because I normally have more chains in here covering like the low mids and the high end. But in this case, I'm just using the sub uh, portion of the rack. And that's just basically a hip hop sub bass, which basically is just like a sine wave in operator. Um, with a little bit of distortion, but that's just the sub bass, pretty simple, just covering the very, very low end being cut at 100. Then I have my main layer, which is this sound, which is going from 100 and above. I cut it at 100 because my sub is, you know, covering the area below that. And this synth I made it on Vital. I'm gonna break it down to you real quick. So I'm gonna just take all of this off. So first I put this Drink the Juice wavetable, which is from the factory wavetables from Vital. I put Sync on. Just changing a little bit of the texture and making it like a little bit more on the high pitch. Then I have this LFO modulating a lot of stuff, but for now what is modulating is the level of the oscillator. So that's what is making, you know, the volume go up and down. Then I have a comp filter in here. Then another filter, which is this uh, digital notch spread filter. You can see that I'm modulating a little bit of the LFO1 into the filter. Very important, the oscillator 1 is going to both filters. So both filter 1 and filter 2 are affecting the oscillator 1. Then on the effects, I have this uh, analog notch spread filter with that little modulation in there making the sound more like focus on the low end then some chorus adding some whiteness some compression distortion on sine fold mode um, modulating the mix and having a pre filter in here that's making like the whole sound basically Pre-filter is pretty important to get that nice texture in there. If you play with the cutoff, you probably can get different sounds from there. Then phaser in here, and lastly, a little bit of EQing, boosting some frequencies. That's pretty much it for the main layer. So now I have these two layers going on. After that, I have another layer, which 
if I'm not mistaken, is exactly the same layer as before. However, I introduce some amp, some erosion, and the EQ is being cut at 800 hertz. So I'm just getting like noise from here, more like a noisy distortion type of thing. That's without any post processing. Then I put amp, rock, uh, preset, volume at 2, uh, dry wet at 40, and some erosion and white noise. And that's supporting like the main layer and giving it more like a high end texture in there. Then I kind of do this trick that I wanted to show you, which is just like resampling a heavy distorted version of this uh, three layers and then using that as part of the drop. So I have my sense group. I'm gonna disable this effect. Uh, also the sidechain I'm gonna disable and also this EQ. So that's how that is sounding. Then on the master, I'm gonna put a couple of glue compressors and I'm gonna crank them very high until I get like that crunchy distortion and I'm gonna resample that into audio. I use this uh, bouncing place resampling uh, plugin from Mask for Life, but if you don't have that, you could just put a new clip set it to this to resampling in here arm in the track and just playing record okay so after i record the whole drop arrangement i go ahead and put that back into the drop group i set the glue compressors back as at where they were in terms of volume and then i have this very crunchy layer that I'm gonna use but something important is that I'm gonna EQ that to not make it sound that harsh so that's why I have these notches in here just to make it a little bit less harsh and also I'm automating this uh, volume knob To make to make it match more of like the volume of this and so by doing that I get like a extra crunchy layer without like distorting the whole arrangement so you can tell that there is like a nice big difference in between this and this so that's one little trick that I feel is very useful then I have this little fill in the middle which is exactly the same patch I think I just changed the LFO and the rate then on the second half of the drop I'm having this little patch in Zerum, which is just the uh, default wavetable with with this band effect. Some cum filter, some air on the noise oscillator, and some more post-processing. So that's how that sound without anything. Then I put band on, noise is on the air can sample, then comp filter, distortion on tube mode, phaser, compressor, not on the multiband type, just normal compressor, filter, doing that movement with the LFO, and that's it for that layer. 
then I have this second layer same preset as before just different post processing so amp fatturator adding some width and some color and another layer of the fill which is just you know changing the LFO rate basically <laughs> So that's for the sound design side of things. Um, something to take into, into consideration when making this type of trippy uh, dark dubstep is like the reverb in, in everything. You will notice that on my fields I have a ton of reverb. The board line. Just to keep carrying things around and to keep like the mysterious vibes going and to help with like the flow and everything you will notice that I have a ton of reverb in all those fills and also I have reverb in here in the group some reverb throws automations like that one in there and in there so that's something that helps a lot into this type of genre is to add a lot of reverb tail like that in there that keeps going so that helps a lot drums are pretty simple kick snare in hi-hats some splash again with a lot of like delay and reverb and so that helps a lot just to keep the the energy going i guess that's pretty much it i feel like covered all the layers which was like the one of the main purposes for this video besides like showing you the sound design and so yeah i hope this being helpful if you want to like study more of the project you can go ahead and get it on on patreon as i said before check the link in the description for that uh, but yeah thank you a lot for watching i appreciate it uh, please subscribe leave a comment leave a like and i hope i see you around